How has the increase in work from home employees affected end user security awareness efforts? Join me and my guest, Tom Pendergast of MediaPro on this episode of Between Two Servers. Welcome to Between Two Servers, the video series designed specifically for IT leaders. I'm Don Pizzetta and we know your time is valuable and in short supply, so let's get right to it with my guest today, Tom Pendergast. Tom is the Chief Learning Officer of MediaPro. Organizations use MediaPro training and awareness solutions to help employees protect sensitive data, learn cybersecurity best practices, and reduce risk at work and at home. My first question, Tom, is what was the end user security awareness landscape like just before COVID hit and millions of workers were pushed out of the office? Yeah, I mean, it, of course, comparing to where we are now, I think the big thing was that most people felt kind of safe in the cocoon of their work environment. They may have had an IT or an information security team around them, but mostly they were working from work. Uh, and it, But there was some start to cross over and a recognition that, that cybersecurity concerns were facing them both at work and at home. Now, I, I know we had a lot of end user security just issues in general, even before all of this that we had to deal with. Yeah. People, people using insecure passwords, people leaving customer data on their desk when they went home at night, and, and those were all problems before. Now we've got all sorts of new stuff. Do you find that there's certain issues that have kind of boiled up as, as big hot buttons, or, or is it really just the same problems? Many of the problems are exactly the same. Of course, when we went home, there's a whole raft of issues like configuring your home Wi-Fi network safely, ensuring that you know how to make a good remote connection from, from where you're working. Those became much, much uh, you know, more present in people's minds. Here's the other one. Uh, when you shift context, the things that you're used to seeing and reacting to are suddenly different. And what happened when we all went home was that cyber criminals just sudden, suddenly started to bombard us with phishing uh, and other social engineering around COVID. And of course, we're all anxious as heck uh, about COVID. So those kinds of things uh, got you know even worse. Now, how about the IT teams themselves? Have they had to change? Like I know many companies had ratios where they would say like, we want one tech support person for every 80 employees, or we need one sysadmin for every 30 servers. But now, now that it's work from home, do you find that IT teams are having to change their structure or grow, increase, decrease employees? What, what does that look like? Yeah, you know, Don, I don't know that I can talk too much about the structure of IT teams, but I've seen and talked to people about a big change in the, the nature of the interaction between IT teams and employees. And, and it looks like this. Uh, people were suddenly contacting IT a lot more with questions about how to configure their home environment. And I think the good IT teams became sensitive and empathetic to the, the to the issues that people were going through uh, in ways that they hadn't been before. So I, I, again, I can't speak to the staffing, but I do think that the IT personnel have had to get more sensitive to the issues people are facing. And I think uh, that's been a, an improvement of the relationship between common employees and IT. And is that like a change in priorities as well? Like, you know, they might have been focused really on server stability before, but now they've got to deal a little more with end user connectivity? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I know I talk to people who are like, I'm suddenly all I'm doing is help desk on, on remote setup stuff. And they were just interacting more with employees as opposed to just configuring servers and the other work that they might do in their typical life. What about on the tooling side? I know a pretty much every organization had built an IT department out to be able to support their environment, typically assuming that the IT staff was in the same building as the equipment they were supporting and maintaining and monitoring. Now that we're dealing with a remote workforce, are we seeing new tools being released to help facilitate that? Or are we just having to take our existing tools and bend those to a remote use? Yeah, I, I, I think most people have, have taken their existing tools and bent them toward rem remote use. Um, and when, you know, when I when I look at the tools, the tool question for me is primarily primarily around how do you deliver end user security awareness to employees. And for us, uh, and and that part of the industry, it hasn't changed at all. Um, most of the learning was delivered uh, to the to the person's computer via you know their simulated phishing emails, but online training, and that hasn't changed. It's just happening at home now. Now I know, like we we used to do a, a either every six month or an annual meeting. We'd pull everybody into a room and do a big end user security awareness training kind of event. 
now that that's online, I, I guess you know, we can do Zoom meetings. Are you finding those are still effective? Uh, do they do they work better that way because they're recorded? Or you know, what, what are the pros and cons? Well, we all know that the lack of human connection associated with Zoom is, is just detrimental to people's feeling of connection. So I think, I think you've seen less of those kinds of meetings, more people delivering short content, um, interspersed, you know, like spread over time, kind of a continuous delivery of content. And that was a model that had been going on before COVID, where people were trying to deliver shorter form content that was very focused on a single issue. I've seen most of our clients increasing that kind of thing. I have done some big live sessions uh, with customers. We had 3,000 employees uh, on, on a call and that went really well, but you know, I think the, the limitations on those are pretty well known. All right, well, let's think about the future here, but obviously yeah. we've seen a lot of change in the last year. We'll probably see more. How do you think end user security awareness training is going to evolve over the next say five to 10 years? So one of the things that's really happened during COVID is we recognize that cybersecurity just transcends home life and work life, right? It's a skill that you just have to have to survive in the digital world. So if that's the case, then why does IT and information security have to own security awareness, right? Why can't that be a function that's independent of IT uh, and maybe crosses a variety of domains? I, I see uh, IT ownership of security awareness uh, and inf info information security ownership of IT of security awareness decreasing over time as it becomes just a more generally uh, available skill set. The other thing is um, that I think we're going to have to look at is digital surveillance. Um, that's the capacity of IT to see everything that people are doing on their computers is only increasing, right? Um, and that can go one of two ways. One, it can get really creepy where we feel like uh, IT always knows what we're doing on the computer and they're pushing us stuff in, in response to things that we're doing. Um, on the other hand, uh, we can also reduce this unneeded elements of security awareness training. Like if, if I've shown that I really know how to handle passwords, why do I have to take annual training on passwords, right? So if that digital surveillance leads to the delivery of only the training and the content that's needed, that's gonna be really a good thing. We just have to manage the, the creepy factor on that. So there's a lot of different components to delivering training, like the, uh, the, the facilities, if it's in person, if it's online, how the presenters work. But what about just the style? Do you see the style of that type of training changing? Yeah, I do. I mean, there's been a long-term trend to go to shorter and shorter form content but this pandemic has really forced a lot of innovation. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. We're seeing uh, more content that's just more fun, uh, that's more engaging, maybe more uh, be because the social interaction is less, we're using tools to increase social interaction through gamification uh, and then conversation about training experiences. So I think that's a good trend that we see going on in the security awareness community. Sadly, that's all the time we have. We try to keep these episodes short and to the point. You can find more details about Tom and myself in the YouTube description or in the LinkedIn post, so be sure to check that out. Thank you to my guest today, Tom Pendergast of MediaPro. Thank you for watching. I'm Dom Pizzette, and this was Between Two Servers.